فاوز بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام أشرف المرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وسلم بمددكم ونظركم سيدي يا رسول الكريم يا حبيب العظيم مدد يا سيدي يا سلطان العليا من الشيخ عبد الله الفيز الدغستاني استاذ الشيخ محمد ناظم الحقاني مولانا الشيخ هشام كباني الشيخ عدنان كباني الشيخ محمد راد عبد خالق الفرشتواني صاحب زمان سيد محمد المهدي عليه السلام روح الله سيدنا عيسى عليه السلام سيف الله سيدنا عليه السلام ثم سيدنا بكر الصديق سيدنا امه سيدنا عثمان امام الحسن عليه السلام امام الحسين عليه السلام سيداتنا فاطمه عليه السلام وشهداء كربلاء عليه السلام وسائر وساداتنا وصديقنا الفاتحة Ya Rasulü Kareem, Alhamdulillah that Allah Subhanahu gave us a life in which to see the holy month of Muharram and opening of a new year in the Islamic calendar and the pilgrimage towards the Divine the Presence. And this pilgrimage begins through the gate of repentance Baba Tawbah and the surah for this journey is Surah Tawbah, the ninth surah. Alhamdulillah that Allah begins the journey through a gate of repentance that every nation has an immense secret for Muharram and that in the way of marifah, the way of Gnosticism that Prophet is sent as a completion of the circle, not an independent message but a completion of a Divine message and that every Prophet has a salam, has a secret in repentance on how to reach Allah's satisfaction, to open the door of knowledge, to open the door of faith, to the open the door of certainty, to open the door of heavenly realities with the ascension of Sayyidina Isa salam and that Prophet brings the door of annihilation. That in this rise into the Divinely Presence when the soul of the seeker is, is asking to rise into the oceans of Divinely Light, the gate that… As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs Please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also. Be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. Most important this gate of intercession, the gate of Sayyidina Muhammad that teaches the seeker to be nothing which is the complete effacement and annihilation that to reach the wave reality, to break the particle understanding that all the Prophets, all the angels, everything was in need to reach that reality. And that's why when we describe why Prophet for the miraj is making the Isra. The Isra is the journey to Jerusalem in which is the link to all the Prophets of Allah and that they all have to enter into that reality, they have to bear witness there is no God but Allah and that Muhammadin, Muhammadun Rasulullah and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah Only through that the, the real and the essence of their wave can be achieved, that every nation is in need to reach that reality. So alhamdulillah Allah gave for us to be from the nation of Sayyidina Muhammad 
And this journey into the oceans of Divinely Presence is beginning with tawbah and istighfar. And when we reach to this reality of being nothing, <coughs> annihilating and asking in the oceans of forgiveness, Ya Rabbi that I'm nothing, Laila Anta Subhanika ini kuntu minal dhalimeen. That's the gate of this whole journey is that, glory be to God and that I am an oppressor to myself. If we understand that reality then we said this whole journey of marifa and Gnosticism makes sense. Because as we go from month to month to month it's a reminder for myself that, that we're fixated first on knowing about ourself and my relationship with Allah and all about myself and that's good, that's for beginning stages. But this way of realities is that I got to know myself and I realized that I'm actually not that important and that I'm the one whom blocking the way to a greater understanding. And that's why this gate of Muharram through the way of Gnosticism and the way of Marifa, what we call Shams al Arifin, to the, the son of, of Gnosticism, the son of all knowers, means reaching to the reality what we call Haqiqat al Muhammadiyya, the Muhammadan realities. It requires that when I step through this gate, that I'm nothing. Glory be to Allah, and that I recognize. I am an oppressor to myself. If I can negate myself then this is the relationship that I'm seeking to understand the reality of Allah's dress upon Muhammadun Rasulullah So I took myself out and as a result when I read Qur'an I'm asking for the reality of what Allah is dressing upon Prophet in Holy Qur'an. So everything is based on withdrawing myself and trying to understand myself in the subject as someone whom is viewing a reality that I'm nothing and in this state of nothing I want to witness these knowledges and these realities. Ya Rabbi what you dressed from Prophet this way of marifa means it's the way of knowing the reality of the meme, the Muhammadan meme. And everything about Allah want to describe everything about what Allah loves and that is the Muhammadan reality. So then this gate of Prophet is the gate of annihilation. In which we enter in, Baba Tawbah that I'm nothing, Laila Anta Subhanika ini kuntu minal dhalimeen. That every time Ya Rabbi ana abdukul ajisu daifu miskinu zalimu jahal. That you don't need to beat me, you don't need to punish me, you don't need to bring me down, I already agreed that I'm nothing. I don't need to be humbled by your punishment, I'm asking to enter the gate of humility. I'm asking to get enter the gate of the one whom has done everything wrong and continuously wrong. If you find any good in what I do then alhamdulillah that's up to you Ya Rabbi Allah. But I don't see a good in anything that I've done and ask that you don't punish me through your anger but that you grant me this tawbah, that you grant me this maghfirah and forgiveness. That through your love and muhabbat, your immense Divine grace that to dress me from that grace and remind me at every moment to keep the ocean of humility. Now people can think what they want but when somebody can train themselves to efface themselves so that to continuously live a life in which no matter what Allah gives to us of His Divinely grace, His Divinely sustenance, His Divinely knowledges, whatever Allah wants to give. If the foundation of that soul is not based on humility then why would Allah give it?
If Allah gave somebody who hasn't trained in humility, well then the wealth He gives to them will render them to be arrogant and feel that they are self-sufficient, nobody can touch them. If He renders them to give them knowledge, then their knowledge will render them to be again arrogant, oh I know more than everything. Then the source of that knowledge, even the, the knowledge itself become like a curse upon the person. If it renders them to be arrogant, they're no different than shaitan. If their wealth make them arrogant, they're no different than shaitan. So whatever Allah wants to give to the servant, if the foundation is not based on humility then as if Allah giving to them to punish them. And that's a different verse in Qur'an when, when people ask that if, if these people are bad why they've been given so much and Allah give to them to punish them more severely. But that's not what we're asking, Ya Rabbi grant us the knowledge so we become arrogant and then you punish us. Grant us a, a, a wealth, a provision and a means so that you will punish us. But Ya Rabbi that I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm a I'm weak servant, uh, uh, oppressing servant that grant us from your oceans of forgiveness and your rahmah and mercy and keep me always to remember myself to be nothing. And that's why this, this gate of tawbah and when you begin to start to read Shaykh's, Shaykh Mawlana Shaykh's du'as in the app we have Shaykh Dagestani's du'as. Mawlana Shaykh Sultan al Awliya, Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Sultan Awliya, Shaykh Muhammad Faiz al Dabastani, Naqib al Umma, Wa Iz al Umma. All their du'as are based on the ocean of humility. And that's the foundation of, of this door that we're entering. That Ya Rabbi, this is the month in which we're entering. A uh, reminder to myself that I'm nothing, reminder to myself that I'm a sinner, reminder to myself that I'm an ignorant person. That grant me from your oceans of forgiveness, grant me from your ocean of Divine grace and love and muhabbat. And as a result we begin to enter into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and the way of humility, the way of good characteristics. The foundation of this ocean of being nothing, it's if the floor of it is is the foundation like when we're building a construction you put a base. The base of this construction is humility, I'm nothing. And anything I'm going to build upon that humility is going to be good character. Khuluq, so the good character planted onto a solid foundation of humility then builds a Divine structure. If we don't have the base of humility then imagine anything Allah builds on it is, is to be punished. That's where people are wondering why they have so much if, if Allah doesn't love them or well because giving to them to punish them. Because the more they get they're becoming more arrogant and arrogance and pride will be punished and create hardship upon the soul of a person. So it means then the foundation of the way for success is, Ya Rabbi make my foundation to be of humility that I'm nothing, how can I be anything? Can anyone have a, a wealth like Sayyidina Sulaiman No. A knowledge like Sayyidina Muhammad No. So nothing, we have nothing in comparison to anyone of significance, Ya Rabbi ana abdukul ajisu da'ifu, miskinu, zalim jahal. And as a result of continuously reminding myself and to take this door of humility in which we look down, then Allah it finds sincerity in that then that becomes an immense foundation in which to build Allah's Divinely structure. And every brick and every wood or, or however the structure is going to be built, its, its structure will be based on the good characteristics, so the, the khuluq. And that's why then you see the teaching is have good manners, control the anger, control the bad characteristics. Not that you're not going to have them, 
that everyone's going to have them. There is nobody of any perfection, the only perfection is Sayyidina Muhammad But as a result we're all completely human. But what do we do once we're affected by it becomes the schools of character. When we did something wrong quickly admit it. Means these are the, the laws of Muharram's Baba Tawbah. If you don't understand Muharram and this gate then anything we build in the next 12 months will be completely un- misunderstood and not built correctly. So you see like if you take a, a shop class and they tell you build something, your final exam the teacher comes and he actually destroys it and say, you built it from the beginning it's all wrong, it's not gonna work, take it all apart you failed. Means that Muharram has to be a strong understanding that the path is completely built on a foundation of humility. So then all shaykhs have to be teaching the reality of tawbah, that I'm nothing. As a result of being nothing I'm continuously effacing myself and everything else then has to be built and every part of this structure is based on good character. And with the good character everything beautific can begin to open within the student. Because that's why then we begin to understand the teachings. I'm taking this through this reality of nothing, as a result I'm being trained to have good character. Means now everything being built is going to be of a Divinely nature, its foundation is of humility, its structure is in good character. As a result Divine Grace comes and perfects everything to do with that reality. Then as we go from month to month then it's all based on that understanding that I'm nothing and that my character is important. The rule of that character is to keep myself at a continuous state of tawbah. So it means that whatever I do I know that I'm going to do it. There's no one that reaches where they don't do it. How you react to it is the most important. They quickly make a repentance. As soon as you do something wrong admit we've done that wrong, ask the person's forgiveness if it was a person. So that you quickly repented from something wrong. As a result the nafs is being crushed, the nafs is being put down and that that foundation is continuously in a clean state of perfection. The zikr, the salawats, all of those are a reminder of that reality. That every time we sin that all we ask is from Allah of forgiveness. And with that reality of understanding that is where we understand that we need to make the madad and the support. That when I understand that if I fall into quicksand and if I fall into a difficulty there's no way for me to lift myself out. So it means in this phase of humility, Ya Rabbi I can't help myself, I've admitted to you I'm weak, I'm admitting to you I have these characteristics that are not correct. Ya Rabbi send a madad and support to me. So when I did something wrong I quickly tried my best in life to repent, to ask for forgiveness. As a result of acknowledging my weakness and humility I asked for support and my life was then based on support. If you admit and you truly admit that you're weak and you don't have the ability to lift yourself then your life is based on madad, right? So when a question comes that, Shaykh why do we need to ask for support? What, what does that tell you then in the whole understanding? Then you didn't understand the gate one. How could you ask for why you need to ask for support if you had acknowledged that you're nothing? 
If you think you can lift yourself out of a problem then already the foundation is arrogance. But when I acknowledge to myself in all humility, Ya Rabbi I'm nothing, I cannot take myself out of these difficulties that send your help and support to me, then the najat لَيْلَا أَنْتَ سُبْحَانِكَ إِنِّي كُنْتُ مِنَ الدَّالِمِينَ فَاسْتَجَبْنَا نَجَيْنَا مِنَ الْقَامِ That we rescue and we'll save those whom are oppressors to themselves. So the najat that Allah sends, the salvation that Allah sends is the understanding of madad and support. It's like construction class. If you don't make the concrete right, what happens? As soon as you go up a little bit like those buildings sometimes you see, sometimes on this Discovery Channel you see like engineering uh, nightmares, they build a building and all of a sudden like 10 stories high, they had a weakness in the construction, somebody probably cheated, they paid the engineer not to do inspect the building, all of a sudden you see the building is collapsing because they took out elements, they took out their engineering inspection, those were, were there to keep everything solid and strong. Then, then it makes sense that if, I'm, if I truly believe I'm nothing then I have to look to Allah for help. That's a sign of being humble. Then the, the sunnah makes sense, why, why you have asa? Many people ask, why you have asa? One because the majestic sunnah. Two is that it shows a sign of humility, I'm asking to be nothing. If I'm humble, madad is my whole life, ittaqullah wa qunul ma sadiqeen. Allah's order in Holy Qur'an, have a God consciousness and keep the company of truthful servants whom their deeds and actions are truthful. And Allah doesn't care for only dunya, Allah's purpose is for the world of light means that you must be in a continuous state of accompanying these holy souls. And that's the reality of madad and hold tight to the rope of Allah So many references Allah is giving to us that we're in a need and our whole life is about seeking a means in which to approach Allah so that my life is, Ya Rabbi send me a madad, send me a support, keep me in an ocean of support because I truly believe in my weakness. When I believe in my weakness no matter how powerful you think you reached, you're nothing in comparison to what Allah can dress you with. So it's in a continuous state of weakness, Ya Rabbi I'm, I'm, I don't know how to do anything, I'm in a continuous state of weakness. Then it begins to understand, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Musabib al Asbab, Ya Mufatiha Abwab, Ya Muqalib al Qulubi wal Absar, Ya Dalil al Mutahideen, Ya Ghiyas al Mustabithin, Ya Hayyu, Ya Qayyum, Ya Du Jalali wal Ikram. Ufawdu amri in Allah, in Allahu Basirun bil Ibad. The, oh, oh the one whom gives, oh the one whom gives, oh the one whom gives, that du'a for every circumstance. When you're overwhelmed, overwhelmed with a chore, you, you have to do something for the tariqah, for yourself, for a khidmat. This concept of madad and this du'a that we have, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab, Ya Wahab that they have on our du'a book and the app, everything is the requesting of madad on everything. Ya Rabbi I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed with my children, I'm overwhelmed with my bills, I'm overwhelmed with my spiritual practices that I have to do, I'm overwhelmed with the khidmat that I have signed up for, I'm overwhelmed with my family, I'm overwhelmed with the world, whatever people are going to be overwhelmed with, this is their du'a for madad. That you are the one whom bestows, don't let my eyes and my heart to change and I'm in a condition only a door that you provide can give me a resolution. And that becomes the essence of, of this madad, 
So, Ya Rabbi I'm in this condition, don't… a condition either can break somebody or make them stronger. If we don't understand the madad as these testings now are increasing on dunya, then they're going to break many people because ah, because shaitan going to come to them and say, is enough, is enough. And we described before it's like holding on to hot coal or like holding on to a flag and shaitan is just telling you, let it go, let it go and I'll leave you alone. And that's why I don't change my heart, qulubi wal absar and don't change my, my the vision from where I'm trying to reach and my spiritual vision, don't flip my heart, don't flip my direction of where I'm going, don't let me to leave it all. The, the one whom has to bestow Allah means in every situation is a madad. Ya Rabbi the testing is becoming intense, you see my ufa'ud amri, you see my condition Ya Rabbi, the send a madad and a support to me. And immediately connecting the heart with Prophet asking for Prophet madad and support. Immediately connecting with the shaykhs, visualize the shaykh and asking for madad Sayyidi, madad Sayyidi and dress me from your light, dress me and grant me support. Means then they understood their whole life is that reality. So I'll give you another analogy is that you're climbing a mountain. So watch a show where they're climbing this mountain and they practically climbing it with nothing. The rope, there's no rope for them to go, they're the ones putting a rope. So they climb this crack and in a little crack he sticks a metal thing inside the crack and puts the rope inside the… so that there's like a loop so the people who are coming below him will have a rope to come up. But they look for the tiniest crack and they put something inside that crack that will hold the rope. Again that's the madad. Our whole life is as we're climbing at every moment we have to put something in and ask Allah for a support. Ya Rabbi whom you are the bestower, bestow upon me Ya Rabbi, bestow upon me a support, bestow upon me a help that this condition, this experience, whatever I'm going through in life, don't let this condition to break me and that'll be the one in which makes me to let my hand go from my tariqah, from my path, from my Islam, from my whole life, everything, everything will change from that point. And that, that is the immense danger that either these tests in life they come, they can make somebody if they're equipped and they understand how to take their test and how to ask for support or the test will just crush and people will be shattered and they go like dust in the wind, everything blows away. We pray that Allah give us a firmness in the understanding of tawbah and, and asking for repentance and, and forgiveness and that Allah at the same time make a firmness within our heart, in our humility that, I'm, that we are nothing of any strength and only Allah put into our hearts to have a madad and support and asking continuously for Allah's support and Allah's guidance and, and uh, immense oceans of muhabbat and love. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzati amma yasifoon wa salaam ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basir Surat al-Fatiha. Tariqa shafat ya Rasul kareem. InshaAllah they said that they're announcing in different places that in the event of atomic bomb going off that you're supposed to have provision, clothes and a bag that you can run with. So when these people make announcements it's not a good sign. It's good for people to have provisions within their home, to have backpack with the essential items in case somebody had to run from their home and all of the things that Mawlana Shaykh has been teaching for 40, 50 years of preparation as we become closer and closer and become minutes away, seconds away from immense, immense amounts of uh, difficulty that people can't imagine. Entire cities they wake up and could be gone. They're announcing it themselves on public announcement uh, and different radio programs. So it's essential 
to have a strong connection, strong spiritual practices, at the same time having provisions within the home for emergency food supplies, uh, power supply, battery supply, whatever is necessary and that we live a life with preparedness. And then فَوْضُ الْعَمْرِ إِنَّ اللَّهُ إِنَّ اللَّهُ بَصِيرٌ بِالْبَعْدِ Ya Rabbi see my condition, I did what I can to the ability that I can and the rest is that Allah send the support and immense uh, blessings. At that time people will become more understanding of what madad is because uh, the state of arrogance will be destroyed. Every time of dip- difficulty that coming is making everything to be crushed. So the, these are the characteristics, we gave a characteristic in, in somebody whom is too attached to dunya in the sense that, not that they have dunya because everybody has to have dunya as oh they have homes, they have everything, but the monkey. And there's a… we put out even a video the, about the shaykh and the, and the rich businessman where the rich businessman asked the shaykh, yeah, I want to go for hajj, will you come with me? So there's a nice video that the, the gentleman, the guys made a nice video about that because in that talk and I think we've taught many times about the reality of a monkey, that the… how they trap a monkey because the monkey has… is such a bad character and it, it's such a stubborn character. So when they want to trap a monkey they make a hole enough for the hand of the monkey to go in and they put some berries and fruits inside the hole in the tree. And the monkey has sort of no brain so he puts his hand inside the hole. When he feels the good, the berries that he wants he makes a fist. As a result of his fist it can't come out of the tree anymore. So they go around making holes putting some sweets inside and the monkeys put their hands they make a fist, they get stuck and then the hunters come to kill them. So it means that the character of a monkey is a character of one whom is a slave to dunya and doesn't occur, let go of those nuts before they kill you, there's no, 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 no. And that's not a coincidence that the one whom wrote the program of, program of this earth the, the newest sickness is called monkeypox. So it means that I'll ask, how many of the signs of your Lord will you deny? So it means that, you know, each one is becoming more and more interesting. So this, this other one that came and now this new one that coming, you're calling for monkeys and monkeypox and it's all a sign and isharat from Allah that the desire of dunya, the craziness of these people's attachment to dunya, the craziness of all of, of what they think of eternity of this material world, Allah bringing it all down. Okay, everything goes out so it means the people whom they love, they love the world beyond imagination is getting notices from their government on television that there's going to be some sort of an attack, some sort of a crazy, crazy event, what happens to people? Their desire collapses because they say, what is this, what kind of world is this that we thought is going to go forever and they're putting these types of announcements and it's exactly what Allah wants, He loves His creation, that don't let it enter your heart and occupy your heart and completely contain who your being is, as a result it begin to drop. So that why? They can have more of a spiritual experience, more of an awakening experience. And same for the understanding of these sicknesses and these viruses, these are all the understandings and signs that Allah is releasing. We pray that Allah protect us from these difficulties, these hardships, protect ourselves, our families and our communities inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.